In the opening scene, Rebecca is helping her mother trim the flowers in her house. However, this is not the chore the older woman wants her daughter to do. She would prefer she spend the time going out on a date. Rebecca seems to enjoy doing work related to nature, but her mom believes she can always get someone to do it by paying for it. Rebecca is scheduled for an interview, and her mother wants her to leave early, but she makes sure she completes the garden work before leaving. She holds the neck piece she is wearing around her neck. Her mom seeing this assures her that he will be proud of her. Rebecca goes straight to the building where she will be having her interview. On entering the elevator, she meets a guy named Nathan. When the door is about to close, someone asks that they hold the lift, and she gladly holds it. This happens several times, which makes Nathan angry because he is growing impatient as she is delaying for others to enter. When he starts reacting to the situation, he sees Mr. Justin coming close, and he jumps out to get familiar with him. Justin greets him and reveals he is not taking the lift as he enjoys using the stairs. Nathan claims he also wants to use these stairs in a bid to speak with Justin. The others continue the elevator ride. Rebecca is now waiting to be interviewed before the secretary comes to introduce Justin to her as the CEO. They exchange pleasantries, and Rebecca is happy to see him. She tries to be formal, but Justin reveals they are not formal at their place of work because he believes work should be fun. He then gives her a tour of the office, which they also call the sandbox. Rebecca is fascinated by the aesthetic value of the office, as everything she sees is IAM, the company's product, and it is all eco-friendly. He then walks her to his office so she can submit her designs to him. He sees the designs and likes them. He then asks her why she wants to be part of his company. She gives several reasons why she believes she is the right candidate, including the fact that she has been part of a team before. Also, being the VP of product design means she will be able to put her mark on every product. Justin compliments her design after her explanation, but also tells her that the position she is applying for is not just for her to design, but for her to lead the team, and what he wants the most is a leader. This causes a little bit of discomfort for Rebecca. Regardless, she tries to sell herself by saying that she is a great leader, but Justin is not greatly convinced. He tells her that she has completed the interview process, but before he can hand over the contract, she needs to come for a leadership boot camp that will take 10 days in the mountains of Tahoe. He hands over the flyer to the boot camp for her. Back at home, while Rebecca is having dinner with her mom, she expresses her worries about the boot camp. She feels it is a method to sniff out those who are not qualified for the position. She fears that she is not confident about her leadership skills, as she feels she works best alone, cannot say no to anyone, and feels nervous around people. But her mother encourages her that she is overthinking things, and she should see the places of vacation, while also telling her she is strong. Moreover, if things turn out worse, she will sell her apartment and live with her. This assurance from her beloved mother calms her a bit. After dinner, Rebecca's mom packs some food for her to take to her apartment, and also tells her to show her boss the cooktop design she's been making, but she refuses to comment on it and says goodnight to her mother. Rebecca gets to the camp, and the first thing she is searching for is her phone network connection, but she does not find any. She enters to meet Cameron, who is meditating and saying some self-assurance words to herself. They greet one another, and Cameron tells her the condition of the site. Cameron is also planning to get employed in the HR department of IAM. Just then, the secretary comes in to tell Rebecca that Justin has instructed her to gather everyone as they meet in the main hall soon. This makes her start feeling nervous, as she is not good with people. When she gets to the field where everyone is staying, she summons her courage to tell everyone where to go. She steps out and talks, but when Nathan sees her, he rushes to stand by her side and repeats what she says more audibly and in a funny way that everyone will hear. Rebecca is not happy with the situation. Cameron then tells her Nathan's name and reveals that he is here for sales. She also tries to give him several compliments, but Rebecca waters them down as she feels there is something off about him. Justin comes to address the whole group. He starts by first trying to crack a joke and telling everyone the purpose of the boot camp. He wants everyone to be without distraction, which makes him tell them all to drop their phones. Everyone drops their phones, except Nathan, who is reluctant to drop all his gadgets. However, he has no choice when the person collecting the gadget stays with him until he drops everything. But he ensures he sees where they are taking the phone so that he can know where he will sneak in and take it when he needs it. Justin tells them about the competition that will take place for each team before leaving them to carry out another activity. They have been paired in two, and just as if Rebecca is not having enough of a bad day with the previous incident with Nathan, she gets paired with him. He seems to be enthusiastic about the pair, but she feels he's doing a little too much. 
They give them the task of lighting a fire naturally at night. Rebecca starts setting things up while Nathan is just sitting there talking to her. He mentions what he has observed, which is that she is not good with people, but she feels offended. While she is struggling to make a fire, Nathan brings out a lighter and lights the wood shaft. She is not happy with him, but he talks his way out of her complaints. Just then, a bear appears, and everyone starts panicking. Nathan is away from Rebecca before seeing that it is a stunt from Justin. While Rebecca and Nathan are going back to their rooms, she expresses her concern about him. He reveals that he is new to doing all the stuff they are doing, but he is only trying to blend in. He is not used to living the outdoor life. This makes Rebecca question how he passed the interview questions and mentions that he only told them what he felt they wanted to hear, but hid some little details. Nathan then proposes they help one another. He wants Rebecca to help him with her outdoor lifestyle while he helps her with her leadership skills. She wants to defend herself at first and not admit that she is lacking some leadership skills, but eventually agrees when he tells her they might both not get hired if they do not get better at the area they are lacking. However, she did not give a response to what he requested. The next day, Nathan leaves his room and goes on an operation to retrieve his phone. He systematically starts avoiding people until he gets to where they drop their phones. He picks up his small phone and takes it out of the building in search of a network. He also makes sure he hides the phone from Justin, who is meditating outside the hall. He almost collides with the gardener and starts talking with him. Robbie is not much of a talker, and he keeps doing his work. He responds with a few words, as Nathan keeps bothering him with a lot of things. The next day, Nathan is taking a nap on the grass, but Rebecca comes to call him because Justin has gathered everyone for their first activity. They get to the meeting late. Seeing that they are late, and knowing Justin will complain, Nathan lies that he is connecting with the outdoors as an excuse for being late. Fortunately for him, Nathan buys his lies and uses them as an example for everyone. He then reveals their first task. They are to go kayaking with their team members. On the boat, Nathan reveals that he has not been on one before, and he is trying to smooth talk with Rebecca. She decides to instruct how they will move. This results in confusion, which eventually makes Rebecca end up in the water. Before Nathan is able to take off his clothes so that he can save her, she swims away, revealing that she does not need saving. When they are both out of the water, she tells him they need to find a way to communicate better. Afterward, Nathan notices that she always holds her neck chain while talking and asks the story behind it. Instead of explaining, she keeps talking about their communication. This makes Nathan also tell her she needs to learn to communicate with intentions and learn to take charge and not be all too nice. After that, Rebecca goes to the phone booth to call her mom. She tries to sound modest and say that everything is fine in front of everyone, but she also complains about what she is going through with her mother. Her mother assures her that everything will always work out. She mentions Nathan to her mother, explaining how he is charming and has a natural way with people. She has to end the call because someone else wants to use the phone. Coming out, she sees Cameron spying on Robbie, and she encourages her to go talk to him, but Cameron is afraid to talk to him because she feels insecure. She ends up running away, despite advice from Rebecca. The team's next task is to get a rope over a tree without allowing it to touch the tree. Nathan comes to the location late, all because he wants to bring along a music player. The instructor gives out the instructions, and just before everyone sets out, Nathan makes sure he plays music to motivate people to enjoy their time more. Just as he expects, everyone loves it. While the task is going on, Rebecca decides to tell Nathan about the feelings Cameron has for Robbie. Unfortunately, Nathan blows it back in her face that she will not be able to set the two up because she does not have any sales skills. When it is time for them for their task, Rebecca ends up doing it with someone else because he is afraid of heights. Just as they are about to complete the task, the music stops playing, and everyone's attention diverts to it, and they see Justin holding it. He asks who the player is. This makes them lose the game. Nathan helps Rebecca down, and within a few seconds, they have a moment. Justin dumps the player and expresses his displeasure at seeing it because he believes they are supposed to connect with nature. He then punishes them by assigning path maintenance for failing the challenge. While they are cleaning the environment, Rebecca tells Nathan about the design she is currently working on. He believes it is a great idea, and then suggests that she bring the product to IM, but she believes that Justin would not want it, because it makes life easier. After all, it is a camping product for people who do not like camping. Nathan doesn't buy what she is saying because he believes every buyer does not know what they want until it is presented to them. He suggests she have a name and a pitch for the product. Afterward, the discussion with Nathan makes Rebecca pick up her product and continue to work on it. Also, Nathan goes to Robbie and starts helping him with the garden. He reveals how he was fired at his previous place of work because he feels tired and is looking for something of a higher purpose. However, he pleads with him not to tell anyone what he said. 
Justin is in charge of the next activity. He instructs everyone to appreciate nature and refrain from talking while they go to their destination. Nathan is tempted to talk several times, but he holds himself. Rebecca sees that he is struggling and decides to talk to him. He talks her into seeing a waterfall that was around. She feels it is a bad idea and they can get lost, but he brings out a compass they can easily use to navigate themselves to the location. Rebecca then agrees to follow him as she is already getting attracted to him. After a while, Rebecca stops at a point when she notices they have been going in the wrong direction. She then realizes that the compass Nathan is holding has a magnet attached to it and it is affecting the direction they have been following. They realize they are in the middle of nowhere and are lost. Nathan is forced to bring out his phone to check if he will find the network to call for help. Seeing that he has his phone surprises Rebecca. She suggests they seek higher ground so they can get some cell reception. All through the process of them looking for networks, Nathan keeps engaging her in an interesting discussion, making her laugh. Rebecca asks him why he has been selected to work for IAM, and he explains that he has a family that enjoys outdoor activities. He decided to take the job because he wanted to get better at going outdoors. Just then, the group finds them. Later at night, Justin addresses their behavior. Nathan tries to apologize, but Justin does not want to listen to anything he has to say. He can see that Nathan is faking a lot of the outdoor experience, and he then tells him to leave. Rebecca steps in, saying that since she is Nathan's partner, she is at fault too. She pleads that he should give them a chance until they pass the final challenge. This captivates Justin, and he agrees on the condition that they will pass as one and fail as one, but he also warns them that he will need to see improvement. After Justin leaves, Nathan cannot help but wonder why Rebecca stands for him. She reveals she is doing it because she knows he is trying. The next day Rebecca explains all that happened to Cameron. She knows both of them might get fired if they make any more mistakes, and she is worried. Nathan and Rebecca are on another task, and he invites her to go out with him, by the lake, as a way to thank her for what she did. Seeing that she is skeptical about accepting the proposal, he adds that he can be able to set up Robbie and Cameron. This excites Rebecca as she desires to set them up, so she accepts the offer. Later at night, Rebecca and Nathan arrive first. Later, Cameron and Robbie arrive. Immediately they see one another. They are drawn to each other, as it feels as if they have known one another for a long time. Nathan then tells everyone about the Rebecca design, which he feels is a brilliant idea. He suggests Rebecca practice her pitch by presenting to them. He guides her on the way to make her pitch captivating and how she would not bore her audience within the first few minutes. Robbie and Cameron love the pitch, and Robbie asks Cameron to join him for a night swim, which she gladly accepts. They leave Nathan and Rebecca alone together, and then Rebecca decides to reveal the truth about her necklace. It was a gift from her father. They stare into one another's eyes, and she starts feeling uncomfortable. Wanting to break the awkward moment, she asks if Nathan is interested in going for a swim, but he respectfully declines the offer. The next day, while Nathan is with Robbie, he mentions that Rebecca's product is a fit for his old company. He feels he can surprise her by helping her pitch her idea to them. To him, it sounds like a great idea. But Robbie advises him not to go behind her for any deal, but he ignores his advice. He heads to the phone booth to call his former company, telling them that she has a product for them. He tells them that the IAM is already interested in the designer who made the product, so they can act very quickly. The next activity is assigned to them by Justin. Nathan seems to be not excited about the activity, as he feels he has good news looming around the corner. Justin then tells them that he wants them to stand in a straight line and rearrange themselves according to height with the fewest moves. One of the campers suggested someone move from one location to another, but Rebecca feels otherwise, as she believes she can reduce the moves he mentioned drastically. She then makes her suggestion, which is accepted by every one of them, putting her in charge. Nathan comes back to compliment her for the job well done after the drill, and then he sees the design on her sketch pad. He asks her to sneak into town with him later in the night, but while she is looking for a way to find an excuse, Cameron tells them she will cover for them. She goes ahead to distract Justin with a story that is not true, while Nathan and Rebecca sneak out of the camp. When they get to the town, she borrows his phone to call her mom, who sees Nathan and likes him immediately because he is a smooth talker. She is also surprised they sneak out of the camp. After the call, they have a nice time shopping while taking pictures of themselves. During this period, Rebecca connects on a deeper level with Nathan as he shares his story. She gets to know why he is acting the way he is and why he became a salesman. He reveals that he lied about his old job and that he was fired. However, he is ready to change things. But when Rebecca seeks to know what he means, he tells her they should head back to camp. 
On getting back to camp, they mention how much they enjoyed their time out and are drawing in for a kiss when Justin passes by, and they have to hide. After this, they almost kiss again, but Nathan rushes away and bids goodnight. The next day, the face of Cameron wakes Rebecca up from the bed, informing her that Justin wants to see her. She meets Nathan there with him. Wondering what was going on, she panics and wants to start explaining the reason they were out the previous night, thinking that is why he called them. He reveals that he received a call from his previous boss, telling him about a bidding war he wants to start. Rebecca is surprised to hear this, and Nathan tries to defend her that it is all his idea. But seeing that he is not trustworthy, and they both agree that a failure from one means they both fail as a team, he tells them to leave. This breaks Rebecca's heart, and she walks away. Nathan goes to her and tries to explain that the reason he did not tell her is that he wants a price and to make it a surprise, but believes he is selfish because he wants to be the one to sell the product. They both angrily say goodbye to one another and walk away. Getting back home, Rebecca explains everything to her mom. She feels Nathan is right in some way. She did not put herself out because she was afraid. After ranting for a while, her mom brings out her first sketch and encourages her, telling her that she is proud of her because she is a terrific person. She believes her late dad will be proud of her too. She then encourages her to go back to the camp and get back to her job. Nathan is still at the camp and is saying goodbye to Robbie. Just before he leaves, he starts ranting about all the things Rebecca said to him. After a while, Robbie advises him to stop talking and start listening. He then rushes to the phone booth to apologize to Rebecca for not telling her first, and she also apologizes for calling him selfish. They agree to finish the challenge together since they've dedicated their time to it. They see Justin and dodge him. While peeping at the people competing, Rebecca notices that they are all doing it wrong. She then rushes to stand in front of everyone, explaining that the goal is to work as a team and not compete with one another. Everyone eventually agrees with her. While they are going to start the challenge, Nathan's former company calls Rebecca and offers her a deal for a designer on the condition that Nathan is not in any way involved in the product. Seeing that he is not involved, she turns down the offer. He feels she is crazy, and she laughs about it. He suggests a name for her product, which is Happy Camper. When they start the task, instead of competing with one another, they work together as a team. Justin is impressed with their performance and welcomes them to his team. Just when everyone is about to go, he calls back Nathan and Rebecca. Nathan then tries to pitch Rebecca to him so he can employ her. Rebecca also talks honestly about her offer and how she loves working with the people in their company. Justin then gives them both the job under the condition that they are transparent. The camp ends and everyone says goodbye to one another. Nathan jokes about their first encounter where Rebecca was holding the elevator door for a lot of people. She walks close to him and tells him she will not hold the door next time. They kiss passionately as the movie ends.